Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through. I um, have been vlogging for about a year and a half now, maybe two years. Um, I think it's about a year and a half though. And um, born in the UK of Jamaican parents, I have an interest in any form of injustice. And where people are not informed, I like to think I'm informing them about certain things or at least drawing their attention to things that are happening around the world that they might not be bothered to look at. A lot of people today, they get frustrated with the news. They um, can't be bothered to read newspapers. And a lot of, for a lot of people, YouTube is the way they get their information. So I just hope that, you know, my little channel, which is not all frills, it's nothing exciting, but I'd like to think that it's got valuable information contained in it. Anyway, what am I talking about today? I'm talking about artificial intelligence in China that is able to track the coronavirus. So apparently um, there's artificial intelligence that can actually track people who have visited the area, the areas where the coronavirus is and it can pinpoint them and the police will go to their homes and pick them up after they return home, after leaving the area where the virus is. It can also pick up low temperature. Now, I know there was some kind of, um, I don't know if you call it an instrument, but they ha do have equipment that can check your body temperature. So I'm assuming this artificial intelligence is a bit like that. So if some, but the thing is, what I don't understand, I don't understand how it works when there's a latency period of two weeks. So I don't, I think what they're doing is just by tracking people who actually go to the area, which is Wuhan, um, they are targeting them specifically and having them under surveillance. So this guy, he leaves his home. I think he went to Wuhan and the artificial intelligence people um, targeted him and told him when he got back home to stay home for 12 days. He got bored. He went out before the 12 days and they nabbed him. So um, it's, though that facial recognition in China is dread. And it's so precise. So that's what's happening now. So I don't know how many of you saw that video with that Chinese guy who sounded a bit desperate. And he was telling people about what was happening in China. And how they were stacking people on buses and how the hospitals was overcrowded. Well, he's disappeared. And I'm sorry I didn't download his video now because it's been taken off of social media. The doctor who whistleblowed and actually told, let it out about the coronavirus, he's dead. They claim it is due to the um, the virus, but there's nothing um, categorically to say that is the case. So, as you know, in China, they really crack down on getting stuff out on social media. And it's a crime to kind to kind of do, well, it's considered a crime to use social media to expose what's going on in the country. So um, I just wrote down a few notes. Chinese authorities are using facial recognition cameras to track the coronavirus. Um, and they claim that cameras can even spot people with low grade fevers on the street. So that means anybody who's walking on the street who has a low grade fever, they can pick them up and take them into isolation and quarantine. Those people might not even know that they've got something. So I guess after that 10 days incubation period, we're well not incubation, the latency period, and they start showing the signs and they might not even know that they've got it. This artificial intelligence will pick them up. A man from Hangzhou claimed he was tracked when he returned from the area that had the virus, even though he was wearing a mask. Police got in touch with him when he got home. So even if they're wearing a mask, the facial recognition 
well, I guess they're not really looking at the face, really. It's really the body temperature, whether or not they consider them to have the virus. That's what these facial recognition, but that is amazing. But they did also say that, the, not, not the facial recognition, but the biometrics or whatever kind of equipment that they have, it actually can track your gait. You know the way you walk? So it the, com the combination of everything, the facial recognition, the fact that it tracks your body heat and with your temperature and stuff and your gait, all of that is combined into one piece of equipment. So, and they can, they can adjust it, I assume, for, for their needs. So he was told to stay indoors for two weeks. However, he was bored and went out and was tracked by cameras. His name, Do and yeah, he was tracked by cameras. Dr. Li Wen Liang, who reported the virus, died last Friday. His family were paid 90,000. Um, social media accounts have been taken down. So he was the doctor who actually reported that the, vi the coronavirus was in China. Um, the man who whistled blew about the virus has disappeared. Um, his colleague, Fang Bin, um, he was the one that said that the bodies were being stacked up on buses. He was arrested, but then he was later released. And then um, he also said people were being dragged from homes. And he was a journalist, Fang Bing. And then Chen Kuishi, he's the one who um, had the video that was sounded really desperate and was talking about Wuhan, what was happening in China. And the weird thing is, is that we see that. And because our minds are conditioned not to take everybody seriously, I bet most people saw that and just thought, ah, you know, and didn't even really take much notice of it. I know I watched it and then I thought oh you know if he my my opinion I'll be honest was you know you're in China you know you're not supposed to be doing that why would you be giving out this information and putting your life at risk that was my attitude and so I thought it was a joke well not a joke I just thought it was somebody you know messing around on a video and now he's disappeared from last Thursday. Nobody knows where he is. And so it was true. And so now I think to myself, I wish I'd taken more interest in what he was saying. But we get bombarded with videos. We're, bom we're inundated with about the coronavirus. And you just get, it's like information overload. And so your mind kind of selects what you think is useful and it kind of rejects what you think isn't. And what you've rejected is probably very important. So if I would thought about it at the time, I would have actually written down what he said, even though I couldn't get the video back. At least I would have had an idea about what he said. So it's a shame. And, you know, I hope he's not dead. But... Uh, he took a big risk, but he did say he needed to warn people. And that, and he did sound desperate and frightened. And I'm only sorry I didn't take it seriously. But it's like, you know, I know it's changing the subject. But it's like when you see people begging on the street and you don't know who's real from who's not. And I saw these two guys, I think I mentioned in another video, that were by the train station. And one of them said, oh, I've been here since eight o'clock. I'm going home now. And you kind of think, what? And then you think about Eddie Murphy begging and pretending he hasn't got any legs in trading places. And so sadly, those people who are genuine um, get discarded because of the people who are fake. And it's like when I'm parking my car and I put... Um, the money um, into the machine and there's people sitting around the car and I think how bloody strategic is that how deliberate is that you know you're, you're, you're playing on people's psyche and I don't like it if I'm going to give somebody something I don't like people trying to use their trying to manipulate me or trying to be clever and you find that you know if you're if you're that um, desperate and yet you're sitting by people who are taking money out of the 
the um, tills out of the um, ATMs or you're sitting where people have to put money in, um, sorry, for the car park. And I just think that's a bit too strategic. But I'm going off. I'm going off the rails. But what I'm saying is, it's hard to know who's genuine from who's not when you're watching vloggers one after the other. And I'm only sorry that I did not listen to Sian Krishi. Anyway, he was reported on incidents including a woman sitting next to a dead relative, and there was a photograph of her, and she was calling desperately, asking for help. And patients who were overstretched in overstretched hospitals. They just didn't have the room to put them. Um, a 60 year old American, he's the first non Chinese person to die of the virus. Um, he lived in Wuhan. The death toll in China is now 722, although there are 31,774 cases of it. Um, it has now spread from 10 countries to 27 countries according to Reuters count based on an official report and that's all I've got to say really yeah no Love Island tonight so I guess I'll watch The Voice hmm. I'll watch The Voice I don't really like the mask the mask singer so I'll watch The Voice later and that'll be my calm down period where I just relax that's all for now. Don't comment on my hair at the bottom of the video. Bye-bye. <laughs>